welcome to another edition of Speed Dating My TBR, the um, ongoing series where I uh, entertain the perhaps vain hope of picking a few books from that TBR mountain in the hopes of not liking the books enough to put them back and therefore shortening that TBR mountain. I don't know if that's a good goal to have, but it's the goal of this show. <laughs> um, so what happens is I pick four books and I read either the prologue, first chapter, or first ten pages, whichever is uh, shorter, and uh, then I decide if that book is going to retain its place on my TBR mountain as I want to keep reading it or if uh, it does not grab me or for any other reason I decide that it will be moving on to a better home. So we've got our four books here and uh, we'll be starting with Maggie Osborne's Silver Lining. Now I know that I have read Maggie Osborne before and I think it was th The Something of Samantha Kincaid I think that was the book that I read of hers. The, I don't remember the what of Samantha Kincaid, but here we are. This is Silver Lining, and I'll be reading the back blurb and first line out to you guys, and then I will uh, continue reading on and uh, see if uh, see how we do. So, this is the back blurb. As scruffy and rootless as the other prospectors searching for gold in the Rockies, Low down, wanted nothing in return for nursing a raggedy bunch through the pox. That's her name, Low Down. Okie dokie. But when pressed to reveal her heart's wish, she admits, I want a baby. Not a husband. Not a forced marriage to the proud man who drew the scratched marble and became honor bound to marry her. To be sure, Max McCord was easy on the eyes, but he loved another woman and dreamed of a different life. Yet they agreed to a temporary marriage that could only end in disaster. But can this strange twist of fate lead to the silver lining that both have been searching for? My guess is yes. And that's the insert cover. And it's a spoon, a ring, and I, I don't know what this is. Is it a button? I, I don't know. But, uh... Let me read the first line for you. Published in 2000. I want to say not that long ago, but it was like 23 years ago. But it, like, it doesn't feel that long ago to me because I'm old. First line. Oh lordy, I'm dying. Alrighty, let's get into it then. this man alive, this man Frank, and the way she does it is, now you listen Frank, I know you've got a pouch of gold hidden under a plank in your cabin. If you die, I'm gonna steal those nuggets. You just think about that. <laughs> I like her so far. Heel slipped in a pool of vomit. I love how she's trying to keep these men alive. So for Max, she's like she has a letter of his, and so she starts ripping it up, and she's like, "If you die, Miss Philadelphia Hauser will never know about the big fancy house you built for her. She'll never know that you were thinking about her right before you got so sick." Oh my god. <laughs> so 
until this one, she's pretending to be the wife that he hates. Can you hear me, you worthless no good worm? This is Martha, your first wife. I'm waiting for you, you spineless lazy chunk of pig offal. Go on and die so we can be together for all eternity. I, it's only two pages, I know. I, I, I want to continue reading. I don't even have to. I don't even <laughs> I love her. I love her so far. So, yeah, this one's definitely going back. Two pa like, I didn't even, yeah. Let's, let's just get, get through them because, yeah. Really, really looking forward to this one. Let me just knock off where I got to. I like two pages. I yeah. Definitely want to continue this. Next we have Carol Marinelli's Expecting His Love Child. I know that well, is, is it necessarily a super baby? I don't I don't know, but I know a lot of people don't like super babies, but I don't mind them. It's a Harlequin Presents, so I'm expecting a uh, crazy sauce. So, let's... Lavander Kolovsky has a dark, dangerous past. He trusts only himself and doesn't want a wife or an, or an heir to the Kowalski, Kolovsky excuse me, name. Millie has returned to Australia to find Lavander. They shared one unforgettable night together, and now she's come to tell her to tell her secret. She's expecting his baby. Let's see when you were published. 2007. I'm not gonna say not that long ago because the first line reads, they had to be breaking up, Millie decided. Okay. Some water. For like there's nothing wrong with it it was just she's watching um she's a waitress and she's watching the hero um basically blow off this other woman who's like try i'm i'm assuming like trying to uh get more out of him sort of relationship wise and he's just really not into it um and she's like marveling at how handsome he is and all that, but uh, it didn't really like grab me. Like she's watching them, and I was like, I'm, yeah, like no, it, it, nothing wrong with it. There were words on a page. That was about it. Like I, so and listen, that thing's big. I need to like. You need to really grab me if I'm going to keep you up there. And so this one, no, this one's going to a different home. Next we have Holly Hart's Danger's Angel. And she is very naked. So I'm assuming a historical romance, but let's 
get the uh, back blurb words. What are they? They call her Ice Angel because her cool, aloof demeanor betrays nothing. Not a glimmer of emotion, not a hint of passion, not a clue as to why this Virginia beauty has taken up residence in a Texan broth in a Texas brothel. It was a desperate gambit to keep her family from financial ruin, but now Angelina Coleman finds herself rescued by Kit Dancer, a bounty hunter turned lawman who is determined to save the lovely young innocent from a compromised life. She doesn't know that he is haunted by a terrible tragedy and has sworn to never love again until he offers her the protection of his name, and two hungry hearts discover a passion that's the closest thing to paradise this side of heaven. Let's see when it was published. 1996. The first line read, reads, Company in the parlor, girls. This one's a no to. Like the the storyline is like interesting, but I there's something about the writing voice that just doesn't doesn't work for me. I don't I don't know. It yeah. I don't know. Like there's no like it's it's not supposed to be like a lively comedy or anything but like she's she's waiting to um they're they're auctioning off i think like um not auctioning off but they're they're all sort of like lining up kind of like the bunny ranch to uh for like the person people the guys to like sort of like pick whatever girl they want for the night and it's going to be her first time literally and literally um and I, I, yeah, I, I just, I don't think this one is one that I'm gonna like sort of want to continue. And I just, I, the, I'm finding the writing style is too dry, too dry. There's no liveliness in it. So yeah, I, this one's gonna go too. And finally, I had to add this one into this week's speed dating because this week we lost, the romance community lost a queen in the death of Julie Garwood, historical romance queen. May she rest in peace. Uh, she passed away on uh, Monday the 3rd, I think it was the 3rd. The 12th, I believe. Tuesday, yeah, Wednesday was the 14th. Yeah, I think she passed away on uh, June the 12th, I believe. Or or at least that's when we all heard about it on uh, Monday. So um, definitely rest in peace to her and her um, con and condolences, of course, to her family. She was, like I said, she was a the queen, one of the queens of historical romance, and uh, one of her books, um, I have a few of her books on my uh, keeper shelf, I believe, but especially my absolute favorite book of hers was For the Roses, and that is like one of my favorite books of all time. Um, and I love her historical romances. Um, she had transitioned on to um, romantic suspense which wasn't really my 
isn't really my thing. Um, but I absolutely adored her historical romances and I haven't read this one yet. So we're tossing this one in here. Um, I'm going to feel really bad if I don't like it. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm assuming that I will because it's Julie Garwood. So here we go. In the resplendence of William the Conqueror's London court, the lovely Saxon captive Nicola was forced to choose a husband from the assembled Norman, Norman nobles. She chose Royce, a barren warrior whose fierce demeanor could not conceal his chivalrous and tender heart. Resourceful, rebellious, and utterly naive, Nicola vowed to bend Royce to her will, despite the whirlwind of, feel of feelings he aroused in her. Ferocious in battle, seasoned in passion, Royce was surprised by the depth of emotion whenever he caressed his charming bride. And I don't, then know there's no insert cover. But let me just take a drink here. Let's read the first line. Wait, first one was it published? 1991. First line reads, he never knew what hit him. Ooh, looks like their first meeting, she hits, knocks him out with a slingshot. face-to-face -face with each other yet that he knows of but uh, she uh, of course he's the enemy Norse Norse nor Norseman Norman um, who's like come to take her family's uh, land or what have you and um, she knocks him out with a slingshot but of course doesn't kill him um and he and his men come and like uh take her her um they arrive, they arrive at her home and uh she has a uh twin sister who wants to be a nun or is a nun sister danielle and um then there's her who is the exact opposite of her sister but um, she's lo they're looking for, <laughs> he's automatically, like, I think it's, he gets to choose, like, which one he wants to take, sort of, like, as a, as a bride, as, like, the prize in taking, like, the home. And she, <laughs> the, one of the servant guys is like, well, this is Sister Daniela. She's a nun. She just wants to go to her abbey. And uh, Royce is like, okay, I want the other one. Clearly, he does not want the nun. Um, and then the, the, uh, servant guy is like, well, she left. And he's like, what do you mean she left? She, and he's like, well, there's a lot of like secret passageways, passageways and stuff here. And she, she took off. So now, uh, they're looking for her in the, uh, in the estate on the land. So yeah, uh, definitely want to continue, uh, with this one. And it's just sort of like, what I mean, like the, the previous one, Danger's Angel, like the story was fine, but this one, like just 
just the, the writing style is so like engaging and like just draws you in and like it just works. Julie Garwood knew her shit. So I cannot wait to get into this one. So we have oof, two that are going off to better homes. We are saying goodbye to Carol Marin Marinelli's Expecting His Love Child. And we are saying goodbye to Holly Hart's Dangerous Angel. Retaining their place on the American Idol state. No. Retaining their place on my TBR mountain is Maggie Osborne's Silver Lining. I love, I'm in love with this heroine already. Low down. It's like, is that actually her name? But I'm in love with this heroine already. And Julie Garwood's The Prize. So that's going back. And I guess that's going to be it for this week's video. Uh, please do check out my previous Speed Dating My TBRs. And um, I look forward to doing this again very soon. Uh, so follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash author ejamie. Like my Facebook page at facebook.com slash author ejamie. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!